Hey everybody, thank you so much for being here. I hope you're having a good day. I am so pumped to do this video. I love doing things that bring the focus back to some products that maybe haven't been in the spotlight for a while. I really think probably pretty much everything I'm using today has definitely been in the spotlight at one time or another. It's had its shining moment um, and it's still being sold to this day, but it's just not currently receiving all that love and attention and hype, right? And I think it's important to do videos like this. I'm doing a full face of stuff that I would put into this category. Let's speak to those things, let's use them, let's talk about them, and really think about how it stacks up with some of the things that are currently getting released these days. And I'm doing a mix of drugstore and high end for this because I think that really makes it the most interesting. I've just got stuff across the board in this video where at one point in time or another it had its moment and in my opinion it's still a really great product. For foundation, here's what I pulled out. Rimmel Stay Matte. I feel like I've definitely lost sight of this one because I talk a lot about affordable drugstore foundations and I definitely think about Wet n Wild in that conversation. I've been talking about hard candy but Rimmel has the Stay Matte and this is a really full coverage foundation. It's it's kind of mousse-like. I wear the shade Light Buff and I always would blend this in with a beauty blender, but it works well. And if you're looking for coverage, don't overlook this one. Okay, I'm getting like a pearl-sized amount here on my finger. It has that thick kind of moussey texture. It's kind of like if Dream Matte Mousse had a little more moisture in it and was put into a squeezy tube and had more coverage. So I'm patching it around. I think I squeezed out more than I needed there, but I'm gonna blend this in with a beauty blender for sure. This happens to be my Sonia Kashuk sponge and I am just gonna press this in all over the skin and you're gonna see it's some pretty impeccable, hard to argue with coverage out of this thing. And it's really inexpensive right now, I think currently at Walmart, they're doing a rollback on a lot of different makeup products on the website, and I'm seeing this come up at $2.40. At Walgreens, it's selling for $5.79. That's probably about the normal price. But it's fantastic. If you take the care to blend it in well, and don't just think that a brush is maybe gonna do the job with this, because I mean, it's possible, but I just feel like a dampened sponge really takes you there. Even though this foundation has a thicker sort of texture, you can work it in and make it really have that second skin appearance, okay? Now, if you're constantly battling a lot of dry patches, if you have severely dry skin, I don't know that I'd go recommending Rimmel Stay Matte to you, just to be perfectly honest. But normal combo oily, this may be one you want to experiment with a little bit if you're really looking for some coverage. Okay, so I got that all blended in. Very happy with that. That's bringing back some nice memories. I used that foundation a lot. And then for concealer, this is actually maybe one that has kind of started getting some more hype again because some people have realized, and apparently they never knew, that the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind line had a pinky toned brightener. It's just called Brightener. It's a really good concealer. I've layered this with other concealers or it's just great on its own, but you see that tone that's coming out of it. And I can bop this around my inner corner darkness and I can really just use it to conceal generally anywhere I need on the face and it's great and it's been great for years and years. That tone is so perfect. They also have one, they still make that one called Neutralizer which is kind of like more yellowy toned if you're looking for that and then they of course have all the skin tone shades but it's thin, it's relatively lightweight but it does cover and it really does do the job. So I'm just bouncing this in with my beauty blender. This could be a beauty blender or a brush application could work with this. In fact, I am gonna bring in the brush around the nose. But yeah, when I think iconic drugstore concealer, this one definitely comes to mind and it just works so darn well. I mean, can't argue with that. I am brightened up, I'm lifted up, I'm lightened up there on the under eye. And then my friends, I've got a higher end product that I'm gonna pull in, um, Bare Minerals, the Bisque, that's kind of like the Bare Minerals concealer option. Technically, it's the consistency of loose powder, but it really has like out of this world coverage. And I remember not too long ago, I got this triangular little brush to put it on with. It's called the Angled Perfector Brush. I think I got that off of QVC, um, but you can apply this with other small dense brushes. When you take this bisque, or there's a shade called Well Rested also, you can take this and put it on your under eye area and you could use this alone as concealer. I mean, I'm talking like maybe you're doing a Bare Minerals look. This truly is meant to function like concealer, but if you really want to take things there, you can put it over 
another concealer and look how it like smooths and just perfects takes away all those issues <laughs> and you just really want to press it in though you don't want it to just be sitting on the skin unblended what am i trying to say here it needs to be put on with a little push you know work it in a bit that's kind of why a concentrated brush a smaller brush is nice because it really ensures that that happens otherwise it's just going to look like a lot of thickness just sort of sitting there but look what that does on the under eye area it really changes the game smooths, perfects. Like, remember when this stuff was so hot? I'm bringing it back, and I pretty much just use that on the under eye. I don't think I need a lot of setting powder elsewhere, but there is a powder I absolutely had to pull in. Remember when MAC Mineralized Skin Finish was all the rage? I have it in the shade medium here, this Mineralized Skin Finish Natural. Okay, so people would use these as if they were like powder foundations or just a general powder all over the skin. That's what I remember from earlier YouTube days. And I'm just gonna take this with a powder brush and I will go over all the skin, even though <laughs> nothing is less needy of setting powder than Rimmel Stay Matte Foundation, but I just wanna go over things here. It does give kind of this airbrushed look. It really gives a Kosas Cloud Set kind of vibe, you know, with that baked dome design and just sort of that sneaky finish on the skin that doesn't look too dry or too flat. I've always thought that these mineralized skin finish naturals still gave a little, just, just a little natural look on the skin. Are you guys having fun? Are you enjoying this? This is so much fun for me. Pulling out an iconic bronzer from the good old days that I don't feel like anybody really talks about anymore, but it's still amazing. And it's Bahama Mama from The Balm. We all love The Balm's packaging. Like everything is so cute, so fun. And they're still doing Bahama Mama and it's a nice deep bronzer, just easy. You know, good old powder bronzer can still be fine, even though a lot of people are swiping on creams every day. This can go very dark. Like it can give the look of a nice deep tan. I try never to throw on too much all at once if I can help it. Yesterday I had like 15 spare minutes and I rearranged my phone. I took out all the apps that were on there that I wasn't using and there were some where you know how at some point in time you get your phone all nicely organized and then like you have to add this or you have to add that and it throws off the whole like way the apps are on your phone and it no longer makes sense but you don't really have any time to mess with it that was me for like a period of months and months and now I deleted what I wasn't using I deleted even some things that I was subscribing to like if you go if you have an iPhone and you go under settings and then your name under at the top of settings you can see if there's anything like that you've been paying for regularly that you maybe forgot about you can end that stuff or delete that stuff there wasn't a lot of that but there were a couple and I just organized things into little sections and now when I open my phone it feels much less chaotic. I highly recommend a little phone spring clean. Okay, so do you see what we're getting here with this? I'm trying to be light with it because I know it's so pigmented. I know what it's capable of, but a nice soft contour will do, right? Here's something that needs to be discussed. The mother of all liquid blush stuff, Benefit Benetint. Yes, this is an actual stain. It is straight liquid. It gives a beautiful rosy look to the skin. Does anybody ever talk about the smell of this stuff? smells like roses and it looks like nail polish but it does a beautiful job actually of giving a rosy flush to the cheeks i'm going to like swipe some on here okay just straight off that little nail polish tip and then dab right over it with my sephora 56 and we have like a rosy nice sheer rosy cheek okay it's a great product like who's still using this daily or has everyone kind of shifted away i mean i think it's great since this video i want to be using this more it's a soft look can you see that softness but yet it's undeniably like a little bit rosy and then you can even put it on your lips too that little applicator always tickles a little bit. But the gentle rosy staining is real. And you know, you can build that up a little bit more. I've actually got an additional blush that I wanna pull in for this video, but just wanted to bring that one up again. It's a fun one. Actually, when I think about Benetint, it doesn't really take me to old YouTube days, but it takes me back from that to like the magazine days for me and seeing this brought up like in YM or Cosmo or whatever. Under the heading of terrific product, still sold to this day, but doesn't get talked about quite as much. The rose powder blushes from Milani. 
Could they be any more beautiful? I mean, it's springtime. I pulled out one of my least used shades, which is Tea Rose. They've got that more dusty rose one, which is that called Romantic Rose. I've always used that one the most. And then not that long ago, I got into my Coral Cove one, which is just beautiful, bright coral. And I feel like for this look and just in the name of spring, we're gonna dip into this pink and just like add a little really pretty, really fresh, matte pinkiness to the cheeks. Will we ever shimmer today? Yes, we will. But look how fresh and lovely this is. This is like baby cheeks. This is little kid flushed skin, you know? Mm, I love that. I, those are such good blushes. And then for a highlight, I'm pulling in Becca's Champagne Pop. Now this exists to this day. Remember when Smashbox adopted some key products from Becca when Becca went bye-bye? We're talking that under eye brightening corrector and also this highlighter. Champagne Pop might be the only shade they did that with, but correct me if I'm wrong. But this is really gonna give us some glow to the skin. Remember like Jaclyn Hill when this first came out? This was kind of like her thing with Becca. Look at that. We needed that. Yeah, it's really pretty, but I gotta say putting this on, even though this is a very high quality highlight, putting it on, it's not as sneaky as that Sydney Grace one, <laughs> that uh, highlighter in the face quad that I've been using lately. Man, I mean, this is good, but that one unlocked another level. But I do love this. I haven't used mine in a long time. My champagne pop. What are we thinking, gang? Ooh, the skin is looking really good. For setting sprays, it's not really a rediscovery to me. I use mine still quite a bit. I think the scent on this is just impeccable. It's the MAC Fix Plus. Really, whenever I pull for any kind of MAC product, I'm mentally taken back to the early days of YouTube. That's what it makes me think of. I'm gonna use it, but I haven't lost sight of this one. Remember the day we decided that this needed to be a scent that came out of like one of those wallflower home fragrance plug-in things? Wouldn't that be great? Rimmel Stay Matte, standard little Maybelline Age Rewind Concealer. When I thought about brow products, Benefit Gimme Brow came to mind because I really feel like this was the first legit like brow mascara, tinted eyebrow cream type of product and then so many copycats came out. Like every brand has a copycat, right? But I wanted to use a pencil to do some filling in as well and I thought about Brow Wiz, which I have one, but it's in my girl's um, cheer makeup bag. I use that on them when they need cheer makeup done. So I'm just pulling out good old wet Wet and Wild Retractable Brow Pencil, which isn't really old. And I talk about this a lot because the shade is ash brown and I always call it nice ash. And as always, the crayon smell. I mean, if you go putting it right up under your nose, yes, you will notice the crayon smell, but otherwise you won't. It's not a big deal. It's a good brow pencil. It's solid and it has that teardrop shape. So it does give you kind of an express brow, you know, it, it lays it on a little faster than some of those skinny minis. But see, quick and easy. Use a little brush. Nothing new, but it's great. Maybe that's just what I'll name the video. Nothing new, but it works. I just like videos like this because attention should be paid to those things and we shouldn't feel the need to always grab every new thing. I mean, just by default because it's new. We can appreciate and love those things that have been in our collection for a while that are just now like buried under the rubble, sort of. A lot of times, maybe some of the products I've talked about in this video were the catalyst for some of the things that are popular today. You know, they laid the foundation for products a lot of people know and love to this day. We're all nicely filled in there with our friend Wet n Wild. Now we pull in the Gimme Brow, which I have this in shade five. I thought it was four. Oh, I have a pencil in four from Benefit, but this is five. Tiny little brush with the creamy product and the hold. This started it. Good stuff. I really can feel it holding in there. Thank you, Benefit. Is everybody ready for Easter? I'm not quite. I felt like I spent several weeks going in the store and thinking, oh, I don't need to buy that stuff yet. I don't need to buy that stuff yet. Now I'm like, I need to buy that stuff. But it's hard sometimes because I got kids with me and I don't want them to know that I'm a helper of the Easter Bunny. Milani eyeshadow primer, not specifically chosen for this video, but absolutely, you know, not new, but iconic. If I could make a list of like home run, don't even need to think about it collabs that I could do with brands, here's one. <laughs> 
absolute daily use, knowing I'm gonna get a good result, knowing I'm gonna have good staying power. It's a rock star. Now, here's the thing that started it. Here's the product where I really got to thinking about the video idea and how, oh my gosh, they're still selling this to this day. This is a really good thing. This is like a phenomenal drugstore palette. And how did this really get off of anyone's radar? And I, it came up when I was talking about those shadow blocks from Maybelline. Do you remember that video? It was the Keeper Declutter and I got those out and they're all bulky and I'm like, you know, all these shades probably exist in the Maybelline Nudes of New York palette. And this is so good. We're talking around, I wanna say around $10, maybe a little more or less, give or take. But the quality that they put out in this, I mean, does anybody remember when this was new and this was truly being raved on left and right? Great textures, matte to shimmer, dark to light, good balance in here completely. Right there in your local drugstore, still being sold to this day. We're gonna do a look with this. I'm gonna use the shade Creator up here that little light tan number, and I'm hoping that this just opens the door for me using this a lot again, because it's a great little palette, and it does contain so much and so many different looks in one in terms of neutrals, obviously. You know, I'm not saying, oh, this is everything, but for the neutral everyday eyeshadow lover, it totally hits the mark. Okay, so real easy little soft crease there. Let's deepen it up. Let's go to this um, kind of rosy brown called Explorer and add that in. It's a little deeper than the shade we just put on. Oh, I love that. Hi, Bisky. Hi, little angel. And I'm really just at this point taking whatever's remaining on the brush, letting it blend up and up, you know, letting it take up some room. Okay, then I'm taking just a fluffy bare brush, and we do have several different lighter shades we can go to in terms of highlights. We have Soloist right here. We have a little bit more buttery um, cream shade called Artist. I've used that one less. Let's use that. Oh yeah, those are great for smoothing out edges. Immediate, like, okay, you thought you were blended before? We make it look really blended by putting this over the top. And this might seem like kind of the boring steps of an eye look, like putting on these basic mattes and doing all this, but I personally love this phase of makeup. Um, if you guys watch my videos, you already know this, but like I love the layering up of mattes, intensifying things slowly, seeing everything blend into each other in a smooth and seamless, perfect way. Like I love that. Um, so we're gonna go deeper yet. I'm gonna go down to this shade called Self Starter. It's a really good, just classic brown. Get a little bit of that on that first like crease brush we were using and hit the crease with that. Do you guys ever like you're sitting around and you've got a thing that you're just worrying about or maybe several things that you just can't quite get off your mind and it's not like sitting there thinking about them is bringing you to any kind of better solution but you're just ruminating, you're just, it's just circling. It's just taking laps in your head, walking around and around. You know, we've all got those things that come up and maybe it's kind of like an uninvited guest, but it's there. You get into kind of like worry wart mode over it or a totally anxious mode over it. Well, you guys know I do love my devotionals. I, every single morning I'm over there at that desk and I have a certain book that I'm going through. The one I'm in now is a Joyce Meyer one. I think it's called Quiet Times with God. It's good. My absolute favorite one has been the Joyce Meyer Trusting God Day by Day. That one just feels like, as I read that one, I just hear Joyce saying the stuff. But randomly one day I was having that feeling like I'm just, you know, was kind of in this worry zone. And I was on Instagram and something came up from someone's story. Her name is Shay Lee, and I can link to her below, but she, I, I believe this devotional came from the app or book called Jesus Calling. And when I read this, like, I mean, I screenshotted it, it just immediately resonated and it gave me immediate comfort. And on my channel, you know, all are welcome here. I want everyone here. I don't want anybody to feel like, oh, well, her channel can't apply to me because she talked about Jesus. Every single person has a place here and is welcome here. But I feel personally, I have fostered a very close relationship with God in the past several years in particular. And when I read this, it just made me, it got to me. And I've read it probably every day since then, and it's helped me a lot. So it says, I am taking care of you. I am taking care of you. Trust me at all times. Trust me in all circumstances. Trust me with all your heart. 
Oh, it's gonna make me cry. When you are weary and everything seems to be going wrong, you can still utter these four words, I trust you, Jesus. By doing so, you release matters into my control and you fall back into the security of my everlasting arms. And it goes on to say, before you arise from your bed in the morning, I have already arranged the events of your day. And it ends with one of my favorite verses, which is trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. So I just wanted to bring that to anybody who, for whatever reason in your life right now, you're feeling any feelings of anxiety or worry or fear. I mean, I think sometimes this stuff gets brought on. We see a school shooting. We see just heavy events in the world. And while we're going about our daily life doing very everyday, mundane seeming things, you know, there's heavy stuff in the world and it's a lot to take and to think about and to internalize. And I don't know, that just, that just stuck with me in a good way. It doesn't make me cry every day, but somehow I'm crying as I'm saying it to you. But I just thought if that little thing spoke to me, maybe it will speak to somebody else and make somebody's day a little easier, happier, um, more at ease, whatever. And if that doesn't apply to you, that's fine too. I'm all about a world where we can appreciate one another and respect where one another's at no matter if it completely coincides with our life or not, or our views. And I'm just wanting to spread love here on this channel and spread comfort. And that little excerpt there was just pure comfort to me. So we're gonna go back to the eyeshadow palette now. Um, what have we done? We started out with Creator, we deepened it up with Explorer, we added a little bit of Self Starter, and this has just all been basically Cree stuff. Oh, we also used Artist, and that was like a light highlight. Now we're ready to go a little deeper, and I'm gonna go down here to Voyager in honor of Moana. <laughs> Plummy shade, okay? And see how that's really good with one little swipe down onto the lid? It's giving full intensity. I love that. I told you. I told you this palette was good. I would love to get a conversation going in the comments. Who's used it? Who knows what I'm talking about? who is thinking, hmm, maybe I need to look into that. Or maybe I just need to scan my collection for something similar. Really, that's my hope here. It's not that, oh, I need to go out and get everything I'm talked about, but maybe it's, I need to just look at what I have and start appreciating some of those things that I haven't used in a while that I got because they were good and they're still good. Oh, love this. This is a really deep plumminess here. You don't use this for your purple fix. Go to the last video for that. Taking small pointed, and I'm gonna go into Globetrotter right here, that beautiful kind of rusty burgundy. And that's gonna hit the crease and kind of blend up a little bit. See, easy blending, easy work. Love, love, love. And if you've gotten to this point and you feel like, you know, it looks like it needs another blend, just take a blending brush and keep it on the edge of things, okay? I say this, but I think it always bears repeating. You don't need to be raking this blending brush over your entire eyelid and everything, but you wanna blend out the edges. I actually don't think I got enough of Voyager right in there, truly. Hitting your actual crease. Sometimes you feel like you're getting in there and you're not, so you do need to kind of check. My shimmer fans out there are saying, come on, Em. You've literally put one thing with shimmer on, on your face right now. Okay, I'm gonna pick one of these shimmers. I want to use Dreamer up here. It's kind of like a really light looking taupe. Gosh, I haven't used this in a while. This looks good. Yeah, it's a little cool. Pretty, it's smooth. That's another thing. All your shimmers in here are smooth, okay? You've got copper, gold, bronze, brown. Um, like kind of a dirty gold over here, this taupey shade, it really runs the gamut of different tones that you might want, and they're all smooth. Oh, and there's a light pearly one right there, which we'll probably use as well. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, Everyday Eye. Originator, right here, a little bit of that. Look at that. I mean, you know you've got a good pigmented smooth shimmer when it can be just booped on the inner corner. Yes, you boop it there and it shows without a ton of building, building, building. May have just placed it on the under eye as well. So many little options there, so many little directions in a compact, like everything you need neutral palette. I'm back on that train. And um, for eyeliner, I started thinking about my Urban Decay 24 seven glide on liners because these are good and these are still around. And I actually pulled out two cause I thought one could be my lower lash line. I got this one called Roach. Hello Roach, it's a shimmery brown. And I thought that could just kind of come down here. It's actually pretty deep. 
I thought it could give me a little lower lash line. Uh oh, I just heard someone cough in the other room. That means waking is starting to occur. They got a terrible night's sleep last night with the thunderstorms. Nookie and Biddy, I mean, they're up at four o'clock having nightmares, being scared about the weather. <laughs> It was tough. Roach could easily define the upper lash line too. See, I thought when I was playing around swatching last night, I thought, you know, it doesn't look that deep, but when you're pressing, you can get a lot of depth out of this. In fact, I am gonna use this on the upper lash line. That's interesting, it's kind of like soft liner, you know? It's definitely blending into my darkness there on the outside, but it's still giving me some definition. Roach, only Urban Decay, right? That was kind of fun. It gave me depth along the lash line, but not really that feeling of, I'm totally seeing the start and end of this liner. It's sneaky. For mascara, I just pretty much weeded out a ton of mascaras that I had. So I didn't feel like I had the full slate of options that I might want for this video to talk about. But you know, it has been years for this one and I think it still slays and it's L'Oreal Lash Paradise. So that is one that I'm currently a tube I currently have open and I'm using, and I think it's really, really good. And I rediscovered it how many months ago? I don't know, but I've definitely gotten back into it. And I remember like being in Destin several years ago, pre-Bubba and Biddy was like really little. It's not really a new kid on the block. Some people might say like L'Oreal Voluminous comes to mind. Um, the Voluminous Carbon Black takes me back to the earliest days of my channel for sure, because Makeup by Mario, when he was getting on the scene, he was like talking about that one. But for me, the regular Voluminous are curl droppers and this one seems to hold it okay. So that's kind of why Lash Paradise comes out above those for me. And it does better about like not smudging and flaking, even better than the Too Faced Better Than Sex, which it is a dupe of. You gotta love having a good go-to drugstore mascara. And more recently, I found good ones from Relove by Revolution. I found a good one from Hard Candy. This one always brings the thickness and the kind of flutteriness. I think I'm gonna need to buy a new tube soon. It's already getting a little dry. Biscuits, are you enjoying this? She's just sit laying down there sleeping. Oh, you know what else comes to mind, which I haven't used in a long time? CoverGirl Lash Blast in the orange tube. Man, that one had a time on YouTube. I remember even Makeup by Tiffany D really liked that. And I always thought of her as being such like the, the high-end makeup girl. But if she latched onto something from the drugstore, I would be like, wing like all ears because I think wow I was always interested to see what drugstore stuff she really thought was good. I can't wait for the discussion of the lip product I pulled out guys. See what I mean with by fluttery with this? It can thicken up the lashes but they never look like big long spidery chunks. Are you sleepwalking? <laughs> it is dark outside. That's your sign that it's still Bed mode. Hi, video. Oh. Hi, vlog. <laughs> Hi, vlog. <laughs> Hi, video. Hi, vlog. Please don't delete me. I'm the famous bunny. I'm the star of the show. They're really Not obsessed with being yeah. the star of, of <laughs> my show. Don't shake the table. Don't shake the table. You're pulling my hair. I gotta continue with this coat of mascara no matter what's going on around me because it's okay. drying on itself. And I got some on my lash line. Um, no, 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 no. We're not setting up shop over there. We're not applying things. Where did you take this from anyway? Everybody... No, don't start talking to A-L-E-X-A. -E it's almost six. Don't delete us. I won't. Later, alligators. I can always count on Biddy for a good hard door slam. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you guys. My under eye looks a bit heavy right now. And I think it's the result of incorporating both Rimmel Stay Matte and Bare Minerals Bisque in the same look. It'll be a fine look. I'm just, if I'm being overly critical of things, that would be a slight criticism. Um, but I'm gonna put a little Cali Ray come hell or high water because as much as we love L Lash Paradise, we don't fully trust her everywhere. She has her place. Okay, here's what I pulled out for lips. MAC lipstick. MAC lipstick takes me back. I pulled out two shades. I wasn't sure which direction I'd want to go today, so I pulled out the matte lipstick in Chili because I love that warm red and I haven't used that in a while and it's beautiful. And then I also pulled out Twig because that's the signature shade of Joey on Dawson's Creek. By the way, if you really want like a commitment kind of show to watch, 
watch Dawson's Creek. It's really good. Um, but that's Twig. Oh, that's so classic for me. I think we need to bump it up and do Chili today. Yes, C-H-I-L-I. -I. It's such a fun shade of red. And it's pretty just kind of lightly applied or blotted on. I like putting it on then rubbing around on my lips a little bit. Pushing it in, giving me that blotted stained kind of thing because it is a matte lipstick. A lip exfoliator could have been nice today. But see, it gives you that soft pillowiness. Mmm! Yes! Mac Chili! So here's my finished look. <laughs> Do we enjoy? I think it turned out great, honestly. Like, this is a bunch of stuff that's been on the market for a while, and I just think it's fun to bring it back in, bring it back into the spotlight. And a few of these things, like Lash Paradise, like the Age Rewind, like these haven't really been far off my radar. Generally speaking, they probably get a little less hype than they once did. And like the Wet n Wild pencil, you know, I've been using that stuff. But in terms of some stuff that I use today, that's really gonna find its way back into makeup looks more often. Nudes of New York, first and foremost. My rose blushes, particularly this shade, it's so pretty. I'm gonna be reaching for some bisque again in a very controlled way. This can be awesome. I wanna use more MAC Mineralized Skin Finish. That stuff is great. And Benetton. Bet it did. I really sincerely enjoyed some of this stuff. And Remmel Stay Matte, by the way, I feel like I'm getting into a season right now, getting into spring and summer, where the heavier foundations may not be my first choice, but it's still a great product. So thank you all so much for your time. I hope you had fun. Had a little deep moment in today's video. Wasn't intending to do that, but thank you so much, and I'll see you all again very soon. I love you. Bye.